Welcome back to my channel. It's been a hot second since I did a video. I wanted to start to incorporate a few um, different things onto my channel. And one of those main things is art. Let me just be very, very clear. I am in no way a professional artist. I think there is something to be said for the art YouTube community. It is amazing. It is full of talented artists. However, sometimes you want to just watch it and be inspired. But then sometimes you're like, oh, every art YouTuber is so good at what they do. They are so talented. I mean, from Jazza to Drawing with Waffles to Casey Golden. This is kind of my way of introducing maybe a little bit more of a colloquial art YouTube channel. One of the things that I struggled with is things like supplies and techniques. And basically it is somewhere between here's the most basic information you can learn about this medium. Also, here's all these really in-depth techniques. And I didn't know from a beginner standpoint, what was, what was the takeaway? Yeah, obviously I know like how to do basic things, but you know, like Copics, would you really need to spend money on Copics? Would you notice a difference? Would you notice a difference on beginner watercolor, things like that? And so I kind of want to just give you guys um, an insight to my art journey. I want to kind of experiment with things and try different things and just kind of test things out and see what I can, you know, learn. And then also what I can share with you guys in terms of recommendations or anything, any kind of insights or learn along the way. In no way am I a professional artist, not in the slightest. I'm not very good at art. I am just, my proportions are terrible. I can't draw hands, um, but maybe we can grow together. And this is my way of documenting where I started and then also kind of giving me a outlet and some way of motivating me to continue to grow my art and not become complacent. And I'm inspired by a lot of art YouTubers. I'll be linking those down in the description that I think you guys should check out because I think they are really amazing. And a lot of them have done a really great job of showing their art journeys on YouTube. But I think a lot of art YouTubers start out their art YouTube channel after they've already done, done the most of their growth and they already kind of have an art style. They already have a preferred, like they, they know the things. So comment down below if you think that this is something that you're gonna be looking forward to um, or if you have any ideas or anything like that. But I'm just kind of playing it by ear, you know, like I said, not a professional, but I think it'll be fun. Now, on to the topic of today's video. This right here is an Amazon package. <laughs> this is a sketchbook that I've been really excited about. I see it all over the place. I've been recommended it on Instagram. I've been recommended it all over YouTube. A bunch of the art YouTubers um, mention it and I have tried it and I've tested it and there's a lot of conflicting opinions about it. And one of the main people that push this and have used the sketchbook for a multitude of their sketchbooks uh, is Drawing With Waffles and she loves these sketchbooks. I connect with her and her art style a lot and what she likes to do and the struggles that she has. Her endorsement made me more curious than anything else about this sketchbook. And so I wanted to kind of, for one, I wanted to check it out and we're gonna be doing some tests on it, but then I wanted to see how it is. This is from the 2019 shipment. At the beginning, these sketchbooks were loved by everybody and then there was a shipment that went out or an order, I'm not really for sure, um, where they said that the quality wasn't that bad and there was peel peeling on the pages and things like that. And I'll link to a video where they descri describe that in a little bit more detail. And Elo responded saying that they didn't change paper manufacturers like the claim in the video was and everything else. So people were starting to think that maybe the sketchbook wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And so this is my insight into the sketchbook. I want to test it out, especially since I'm starting this kind of new art journey. And I'm going to be testing out some different mediums. So that way you can kind of see what I'm getting at and what um, maybe this maybe this will work for you. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't, for, won't work for me. So with the price on this, this is, I believe, about $25 right now on Amazon. And I will link it in the description uh, below as well. But... I'm pretty impressed with what it looks like. All the reviews are pretty good, but I want to make sure that, you know, is it worth it? Is, and if it's worth it, what kind of mediums would it be worth it for? What kind of artists would it be worth it for? Let's just get to get to my first impressions of the Elo sketchbook. So I don't know if I have my scissors. Okay, I have my scissors, so now let's get started. Oh, please don't let me skip, cut this. I can't even cut the straight, like much less cut, like draw a straight line. Oh my gosh. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Oh my God. 
So this is the ELO sketchbook. It is, I got the 10 by 10 one. They also come in eight by eight. So let's take this plastic off. So the plastic is completely sealed all the way around it. It's a very, very nice, way to do this and none of the papers are wrinkled because that was some of the things is people said they ordered it and it got damaged and I don't know if the plastic helps that much with that but it's, mine's not damaged well it has a little bit of like a pucker right there but that may just be the way that the leather's folded because it's made out of like this faux leather I don't know if you can see that um but I'll show you in more detail when I get all this plastic off Now here's the ELO sketchbook in all its glory. I did get the XL just cause I like bigger sketchbooks personally, which is funny because I actually don't draw that big, but I'm working on that kind of. I think that when I draw smaller, I feel more confident. I'm like, oh, if, if I draw small and I make a mistake, it's not like a big mistake. It's tiny on the page and no one will notice. So it does come in this faux leather, almost matte kind of material. And it does like, Squeak. And then you can see on the back, it does have, ooh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was thinking that this is just, let me show you in a little. So this is, um, this is actually, I thought this was like just printed on here, but I don't know if you can see it, but this is actually like, like pressed into the leather. That is so nice. Oh my gosh. And then you guys can see kind of that it has a cute design on the front, um, the little ELO logo. But this is, the benefits to the ELO sketchbook. So this is what they have on their packaging. This says, so one, it is a perfect square. Um, so basically the perfect square is so when you post on social media, and specifically Instagram, you don't have any awkward cropping or anything like that. And so it's easier to share your art, which I think is a nice touch because I always struggle with it. However, I do think that it's kind of interesting because a lot of artists that I know don't just post just their sketchbook. A lot of artists that I know post pictures of like their desk or like their table or their medium or whatever they're using in addition to that. So, well, I think that's useful. I'm not sure if that's a huge selling point for me. I do like that a lot. So, I mean, that's great. Hardcover. So it is a hardcover, which I love. I think that that's a huge selling point for me. Um, cause I, and it's also bound. So the fact that it's bound, it's got a nice binding, but yeah, it ha does have a nice binding. Um, it is, you can see right here, it's got a really nice edge and everything like that. Um, it's, the, the edges and the paper, it doesn't sit flush or anything. So you don't have to worry about your pages being all wonky or getting torn or, or anything like that. So that's really nice, at least for me. And then this is also a heavyweight paper. So it says that it's a hundred, it says it's great for most drawing tools, pencils, pens, inks, pastels, you name it. So I don't have inks or pastels. However, I do have like Copics, acrylics, watercolor, things like that. So I think that That'll be interesting to see how this holds up. It does say it's 180 GSM, which is a little light for watercolor. However, I have seen a lot of watercolor artists use this sketchbook and enjoy it. And then um, Drawing with Waffles also has mentioned that she uses inks in it and Copics and things like that. So I think that that just seems a little suspicious that that's okay with this, but it could be the type of paper. Again, marker, marker paper doesn't seem like it would be able to hold that kind of wear and tear, but yet it does because it's got that, you know, cover on it. Number four is the fair price. So either sketchbooks are made with high quality materials, but still easy on your wallet, which I agree with that. There's a lot. So compared to things like a Strathmore or Moleskin or things like that, your the ELO sketchbook is actually very, very affordable. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to test it out because if I fell in love with it, it would definitely be something that I would want to get again in the future. Then also you have the huge surface. So a hundred inches squares, you know, 10 by 10 of drawing space. Now that's XL. And I love the fact that they included a little elephant. Like when you think, oh, we need to describe, like have a picture for how like big our sketchbook is. Oh, we need to put an elephant. I just think that's really cute. And I don't know why. So that's the ELO sketchbook as they tell it. So let's do a little bit more insights on, oh, it's almost too big to fit on the camera. Oh my God. Okay. So this, it does come with a very nice, like elastic thing. My only worry with that is that it gets stretched out over time, but it seems like it's made out of pretty solid material. So it's, and it doesn't feel like it's attached cheaply. Right here, you can see it has like little ridges of where it's pressed in. So that does make me think that if you travel with this a lot, that it, will like whatever you put on your bag or if you have something that presses into it a lot it will indent on the leather as to be expected but just something to keep in mind but this does seem like it's attached very well it's not it's actually like 
I don't want to say it's sewn in, I guess glued in, but it's actually inserted into the leather. But see, you can see right there how it's actually part of the sketchbook. So it's not glued on, it's not stapled on. So you don't have to worry about that coming off unless you like literally pull it out of the sketchbook, like pull it out. So going back to the actual sketchbook itself, um, this is the first impressions. Ooh, it's yellow. I wasn't expecting that and I don't know why. I was expecting it to be like white. Ooh, and see they have ELO hue markers now. So maybe I will test those out at some point. <laughs> Comment down below if you think I should te uh, test those out um, and see if they're, what they're like as a beginner. Um, just take that paper off. Oh, and then here's the ELO, like it's on the back cover, but here's ELO's um, social media. And like I said, and you can share your artwork on social media using the hashtag, show me your ELO. So if you guys do decide to test this out, um, definitely share that with them. I think that they would enjoy that. Also, this video, not sponsored at all. So this, it, it does lay flat. That's my, f another thing that I notice about like a lot of sketchbooks is it doesn't lay flat, but it does lay on completely flat. So, and I'm not pulling the paint. I mean, that's completely no hand on this side. Like, oh, 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 look mom, no hands. And it does have, you found me, send me back to, and you can put your information there. You flip it over and then you have that white page, um, which is interesting because I'm not sure what you would do with this page. I, you might want to use this to sketch your like designs or like a thumbnail maybe of if you want to do the outside of your design maybe. But then this to me would be the first official page of the sketchbook. And so that's some really nice paper. I like just, it has very little to no texture on it. So it doesn't have, it's, it's very, very smooth and it almost feels like, I don't know how to explain it. Like it's almost like waxy, but not waxy. It's like, I don't, like I said, it's very hard to explain. It's just very smooth, but it's very thick paper. And so you can like, you hear that? I'm curious to see how this performs, but it feels almost like computer paper in a way, how smooth it is. Like it's not watercolor or textured at all. And that's the biggest takeaway for me. And so I'm curious to see how it, how it does. So you can see the stitching on here, but you can see the stitching in here is, it's actually stitched in and it's stitched in very um, securely and very, it's not like one or two, it's you know one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different spots of where it's sewn in there which I think is pretty awesome. It does have a ribbon divider. Yeah, see it has a ribbon divider so you can even keep track of where you're at. And that's a really pretty color too. In the future, I think it'd be awesome if Elo could let you like to pick your color. I know that sounds weird and completely like not, not important. And that's not a critique. I just think that's an interesting thing that they could do in the future. Uh, this seems to be about the middle. And so that's how flat it lays. It does have a little bit, but I'm sure like if you, as soon as you start working it and it's, I just think that since it's brand new, um, it's still not, you know, built in a little bit, but that's completely flat. So you can see how flat it lays, which I think is a very big pro, like pro for ELO because a lot of sketchbooks don't do that. And it's a big problem. So, cause when you're trying to draw and stuff, it's like curving towards the spine and that's obviously not ideal. I just can't get over this paper, man. This paper is so nice. I mean, honestly, I'm very impressed so far. All in all, I think this is a very impressive, beautiful sketchbook. But so this is the last page. So you do see, um, it's very similar to the front where you have the white page and then a yellow page, and then you have two yellow pages. But one thing that's really cool about the ELO sketchbook is that it has a pocket in the back. So if you have things like little scraps of paper, or if you wanna do, like I know that um, in one of her sketchbooks that she took to Japan, I believe, Casey Golden um, had a sketchbook that was smaller and she would do thumbnails and drawings and doodles and that. And then she had a separate little pocket for where she kept watercolor paper. So when she wanted to do watercolor, she didn't have to keep a whole nother set of watercolor paper. Odds are, I'm just gonna put this back here and I don't know what I'll put in there. Sometimes I put stuff that's useful, sometimes I don't. I haven't had very many sketchbooks that have a pocket, but it's actually a very, very well-made pocket. I know that sounds weird, but you'll see on the side, it actually extends quite a bit, which I don't know how like useful that would be because I mean, if you're the kind of person that's gonna keep that, I mean, like that's bigger than the sketchbook. So, I mean, I guess you could, but then at that point, just, just get you a filing cabinet.
Like, what? It's made really well. It's not made out of paper. This is actually, it almost feels like a, have you ever had like an Ikea bag? <laughs> or like, you know what I'm talking about? One of, it's almost like a plasticky kind of woven material, but it's very nice and very solid. And it's very smooth. And it's, seems like it's part of, it's actually glued onto it, but it's in between. So it looks like they took two pieces of the yellow paper and it's folded in half and they glued it on the inside. So it's almost got twice as much support. It's not just glued to the, so I can't feel the, the material on the inside, like just right here. I can only feel it on the side, which I think, this seems like it's very good quality. And I just, this seems like such a, non-issue for a sketchbook and it seems like I'm like oh you're going on and on about the pocket what are you talking about but for me as someone who like doesn't know that much about sketchbooks and paper and things like that it's reassuring to see that kind of like attention to detail and like things like this because to me that says we cared about a product it's not just like oh yeah we have a fancy name it's just to me it just speaks a lot about the quality overall